Semi-final three of Melody Festival in 2020 has taken place in the city of Luya. I'm not sure where that is. I'm sure it's lovely. And two acts have advanced direct to the final. They are Mohambi with Winners and Mariette with Shout It Out. Should we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this! I should point out that I am in London, but my sister Suzanne is at home in Atlanta. That's why it is still daylight where she is. I have a very bright light. Suzanne, first let's talk about Mohambi, the song Winners. He's one of the two qualifiers to the final. What do you think? Um, well, I like this song. It was very upbeat. Interestingly, when I looked at Mohambi perform, I really felt that I could see him on the Eurovision stage. Um, the one thing that I didn't like about the lyrics was, without you, I'm a dreamer, together we're winners and we can save the world. Um, I really felt like he was diminishing himself and saying he was nothing without his love. Um, and he should probably give himself just a little bit more credit. But from the moment he stepped on the stage, there was something about it. And I, I really could just see it on the Eurovision stage. He's a good performer. The song for me, I'm take it or leave it, but he sells it so well. He can move. I kind of <clears throat> liked the disco stone circle that was going on. A lot of energy and vibrancy. I understand why this went through. Um, it's a little generic, to be honest, but he is so likable and charming. I can understand why it did go through. All right, next, the other direct qualifier. This was Mariette with Shout It Out. I just really loved the staging here. I think Sweden does a great job making the stage look enormous. Those lights were shooting out. She looked so cool in that black, was it leather? She was like a black urban dominatrix, just so hip, working the stage. She seemed so at ease. It's interesting to see her in this guise because in the past at Eurovision or at Melody Festival and she's been kind of static. Lovely to see her moving. Um, yeah, this, this was better than I thought it would be. Um, I have no frame of reference for Mariette, but from the moment she stepped on the stage, she was my winner of the day. Um, and that did not change as I listened to the other six performances. I really love the message of the song. You know, it goes back to that whole communication. We've got to communicate. If we don't communicate, if we remain static, nothing's going to change. Um, Mama's got some beautiful shoulders. Um, she spends some time in the gym. She's got a beautiful face, beautiful bone structure. I did like the black leather. Um, she has such a stunning soft face um, that against the black it was really cool and as those lights were shooting out I kind of felt like she was um, going through a tunnel or going through space and it was as though this is going to sound silly but it was like there were just words shooting past her that she was um, trying to share. Yeah this was also my winner. It's curious because it didn't do well in the audience poll last Ooh. night. Yeah last night and so people had written it off um, and I didn't like the studio cut, but they got this staging absolutely perfect. Okay, there are of course two other acts who are going to the Andra Shonson round, the second chance. They are Drangarna with Pigga Ock Drang. Now this was a little throwback for me. Um, I think it's great that Melody Festival and offers something for everyone, but I am definitely not one of the people who was feeling this. This song was so interesting. Um, as they opened up, I'm like heavy metal, and then I heard twang, and I heard country, and the banjo, and sort of a Scottish tune, and I felt like it was all over the place, but it was happy. Um, I was very surprised at how well it did. Yeah, because we're not Swedish and we don't understand the lyrics, maybe we're missing something. Maybe. Perhaps, perhaps so. Probably. <laughs> All right. The other Andre Shonson qualifier, Anis, Anis Don Domina with Vemar Som As. 
I really enjoyed this. This is like a guilty pleasure. I would have sent this direct to the final over Mahambi. I don't know, y'all can roll your eyes all you want. I just thought it was so cool how he was standing inside of a magazine cover and it said things like, yeah, shout out to all my haters, Mina haters. Like it, it had this real attitude to it. It was playful. He's known for party songs and he brought the party yet again, so much joy, so much life. Um, I just found it to be incredibly upbeat. Somehow it went over my head that those were magazine covers, though I did notice them and thought they were pretty cool. Um, there was something just fun and almost rappy about this song, and it made me just kind of want to bebop along. Yeah, good vibes all around. And quickly, let's just go through the other three while we're both here. I don't even remember who they are, to be honest. Oh, Albin... Yonsen, Livet, Borjarnu. Yeah, I mean... I... So, this song to me sounded like it needed to be on the soundtrack of a sitcom. Um, can't explain that, but that's what I thought the entire time he was on stage. There was something fun and upbeat, and it doesn't sound anything like the soundtrack or the theme song to Friends, but that's kind of where I was going. Just, it, it sounds like it's the soundtrack to a sitcom. Yeah, I, it just, I liked the staging. I remember a white sheet blowing. I have nothing else to add. Amanda Asa Late, I really liked her staging. I thought it looked so cool, this yellow box, the neon lights. I couldn't hum the song to you now. Granted, there are seven, I think, national selections going on, which is why I'm slightly frazzled. Um, but I loved the way she looked. I thought she had a confidence. Um, yeah, it was, it was a nice stage show. So I thought Amanda was very pretty. I, however, did not like the yellow staging. Um, and interestingly, both times, well, when she sang and then the first kind of run through, you know, I was watching this from the internet. It just went fuzzy. Um, and I don't know if that means something, but I never actually got to hear the song, um, though I did see the yellow staging. And so I'm, it was one big white and yellow blur to me. And the other act was Faith Kakimbo with Crying Rivers. She was very emotional. In the final oh, shot, God. when they went up in her eyes, it was like there were tears. Like you could see her crying rivers. I didn't like the song. I loved her voice and I loved, the, the again, the lights, the stage, the fog. The song for me was just lacking, but she's a wonderful performer and I love that she felt so much. Um, beautiful voice. The song was incredibly melodic. Um, you know, I always go in for the lyrics and I was kind of wondering, you know, has she passed on and, you know, she is in the afterlife and she's telling people who are still alive to go on with their lives and stop crying for me? Or did she break someone's heart and she's saying, move on? Um, I was just kind of wondering what the frame of reference was. Um, again, I well, I didn't really love the song, but she has a beautiful voice and it was melodic. Well, goodness, that was so efficient. Less than 10 minutes. Final thoughts for me. This was my least favorite semifinal so far. I much preferred last week, and then I much preferred the first week to that. I just feel like, yeah, there was Mariette and then everyone else. This was a one-horse race tonight for me, so it wasn't very exciting. Um, Mariette all the way, baby. That's all I got to say. Well, that's what we think. What do you, what do you think? think? Are you happy with those who went direct to the final? Who would you put in under Shonson? Let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. We're on all the social media platforms. And we will see you later. Bye! Bye.